right to prove that we really do listen to our viewers, we are, after several admittedly previous false starts, going to start a regular series of quick and easy riding tips. I know that if you're an experienced biker, then most of these will probably not be of that much interest to you, although one or two of them could prompt a, a little bit of self-reflection on your own riding. One thing I definitely do know after 30 years of riding professionally is that you never actually stop learning. So if I can pass along a few hints and tips that prove useful to those of you still in the early stages of your biking journey, then it will have been well worth the effort. Just bear in mind that these are not from some kind of rider's bible or official handbook of rider tips. These are just things I've picked up and learned during my own journey. This series that will feature every few weeks will be available in its entirety for you to refer to on the Bike Show YouTube channel. So please feel free to head over there and check them all out. First up, and I've talked about this before, is just to practice being relaxed on the bike. Far too often I see riders who are very obviously not relaxed. They look like they've got rigor mortis or they've been flash frozen in place. The dead giveaways are a ramrod straight back and similarly straight arms that appear to be locked at the elbow. I appreciate that I'm a kind of natural bit of a sloucher so I struggle to have a straight back even when I really want to but when you're on a bike you need to relax a bit. Embrace your inner laid-back teenager. Why do you need to do this? Well, it'll help you to not interfere with the bike's handling. It will allow you to ride more smoothly and ultimately more quickly. And you'll be better prepared, and this is important, to react to any sudden developments. If you're locked in position by your arms and your back, any movement of the bike over a bumpy road, for instance, will mean those movements of the bike that aren't absorbed by the suspension will transmit themselves directly into you. By becoming an almost rigid part of the bike, you make the whole rider and bike package one larger, more ungainly lump that will exacerbate any disturbances like a bumpy road, effectively making their impact on you more severe. Ideally, on a bumpy road that you might suddenly encounter, perhaps at speed, I would want to be relaxed in my back, but with my core muscles here, providing the upward support. And not with any locked elbows and straight arms that suggest at the same time, you've got too much weight here on your wrists. I would have a bend in my elbow and not much weight on my wrists at all. In fact, my core would be doing a lot of the work, keeping me upright. I may have a bit of a, a gentle grip on the tank as well with my knees to back that up. But when I hit a series of bumps and the bike starts to buck and weave a little bit, and I know the more than I can let it do its own thing without interference from my body, then the quicker it will deal with the stresses and settle down. So there's less weight and pressure on the handlebar, which means it can wriggle around a bit if it needs be without upsetting my body position because I don't have one of these death grips on it. If needs be, I can even release my knees and increase the pressure on my feet and take some of my weight off the seat. Again, I'm just enabling the bike to be able to react with as little interference or effect from me, the rider, as possible. As you get more experienced and you want to go down your favourite road a bit more quickly, having this relaxed relationship with your bike will mean that not only will you be able to move around the bike more easily to help it go more quickly, but you'll also start, I think, to understand the delicate relationship, the feel, as they call it, that you have of a bike in a turn or under braking or under acceleration and that'll help you understand the messages that your bike is continually sending you about stuff like grip levels, uh, the suspension performance, about its general state of happiness. Yeah, okay, beginning to sound a bit like a, a Mystic Meg character there. So let's leave it at that. Practice every time you ride by just analyzing yourself. Are you relaxed? How do you think you look? 
unlock your elbows and take some weight off the handlebar, unstraighten your back and concentrate on using your core muscles to keep you in position. Maybe use your knees to help grip on the tank and put some pressure there. And if, well, obviously that's if your bike works like that. If you're on a cruiser, that's not quite something that will work for you. But maybe try and take some more weight on your feet occasionally as well by lifting yourself out of the seat very slightly. Maybe do that last one out of sight because people might think, well, it's just gonna look a bit weird. So maybe don't practice that one down the high street.